We live in an age of incredible possibilities when it comes to park builders. Take Planet Zoo, for example. People have created the impossible, the unimaginable in that game. But for me, I prefer a simpler time. I don't want to worry about precisely moving my building's axis or clipping buildings through other things to make things look cool. No, I'm a simple man with simple tastes. I want to be able to pick up my guests and feed them to the shop. I want to hear this. This is Taiku, baby. A game where in its first tutorial, it tells you to release the lions. And then tells you off for it. Seeing as it's been thousands of years since I've played this game, I thought it was about time to take a stroll down nostalgia lane. Back to a time when installing a game would give you cool little hints on how to play it. And the bottlenose dolphin sound effect would make your ears bleed every time you clicked a damn button. So, of course, I started with the hardest challenge the game would allow me. The ultimate zoo. For this, I would have to meet a bunch of requirements. Achieve a zoo rating of 90. Animal happiness, 90. Guest happiness, 90. 10 different species. Two zoo animals. Two dinosaurs. Two marine animals. 500 guests. And a $200 profit from a show. And all of this starting with a budget of $60,000. So without wasting any time, I created a giant tank and proceeded to waste thousands of dollars lifting its walls up and down. A, a great start, I think we can all agree. For our humble beginnings, what could be more appropriate than fish? Fish are literally everywhere. They are the birds of the sea. And not to neglect my visitors, which would now be swarming to see the fish, I decided to add a seafood restaurant and named it appropriately. With that, I proceeded to make two more tanks and fill them with more seabirds. One housed the green moray eels and another the swordfish. I seemed to be making progress, I thought, until I realized that the eels needed some sort of log or something that I didn't have, so they had to go. I added plastic dinosaurs, which you could ride to the zoo and sold the offcuts that didn't meet the restaurant's standards in a kiosk next to them, colored appropriately. The game decided to bless me with a lovely pretty ribbon, which also came with a $25,000 bonus, which I then used to create the greatest, get it? <laughs> Great way, <laughs> The greatest show the world has ever seen. I filled Bruce's tank with all the barnacles and sunken ships a killing machine would need in time for his first show. He began to splash around angrily, just as a great white shark should. But the audience, uh, they weren't impressed. While I was deep in construction on the next aquatic jail cell, Bruce began his second show. This time the stands were full. The pressure, Bruce could feel it and it showed in his performance. What do you mean, what was that supposed to be? I've never seen such a show, oh. His splashes were uncoordinated. The one thing his biggest critics were waiting for. As for my fishies, the tuna seemed to be the most popular. Jesus, everybody loves the bloody tuna. So I slowly start merging all of them into that tank. Having a heart to heart with Bruce, I decided to teach him the only other trick that he could learn, the breach attack. The critics would think twice, leaving a bad review if they knew he could leap out and eat them. And it worked. They began to clap for Bruce, impressed by his murder potential. Yes! The standing ovation! You'd also think that whales need a vast ocean to swim, but in actuality, this size was good enough. I also let it play with the tuna for a bit, until the diver woman told me off. And, and, and can we just pause for a second? I have a whale in a tank in a zoo where a great white shark is performing tricks. You see, that's why I like this game, it's brilliant. <coughs> now, because Bumby, the humpback whale, was so easy to take care of, I thought, hell, why not? Let's get a sperm whale. It's a thousand dollars cheaper. It must have around the same- No, no, it was terrible. I had to keep making the tank deeper and deeper. Every time, this cost me thousands. And of course, there's no speeding up the time in the game. I had to wait five minutes all just to move the water level up a couple of inches. And once the tank got deep enough, there was only one thing left to do. Widen the tank, which deleted all the depth and all the progress and basically threw out all my profits out the window. So I named the whale appropriately. In order to recoup the losses, I decided to put in an orca show right next to Bruce. But the orca was too good, too talented. It performed jumps and waved at the audience. Or at least that's what I think it was doing. Either way, I could tell this was affecting Bruce. His confidence already in tatters. 
How could he compete with play with ball? Oh my God. Bruce, Bruce, don't look. Don't look, Bruce. The crowds were cheering, standing ovations. Whereas Bruce's stands were, you know, they, they were kind of empty. So I sold the orca and merged the tanks together. It gave Bruce a little friend. Bruce said that. Things were looking fantastic. <laughs> I started the day looking over my checklist. I still had the 90 zoo rating to achieve, and what better way to achieve the goal than to make the dinosaur playground even bigger? It so wasn't due to the $5,000 bribe this kid handed me. I also built up the other side of the zoo, a mermaid statue and a polar bear to fit the nautical theme. I even upgraded the stands for Bruce and Brucetta. I added a shark tunnel strategically to the side of Bruce's tank. So if guests wanted a shortcut and get his signature after that amazing show, they'd have to pay me $2.50. Money! But I needed some dinosaurs, of course, but nothing too flashy. I didn't want people to hear I had a T-Rex and think I was lying. So the Gallimimus seemed like the perfect fit. <laughs> The checklist also required that I have two zoo animals, so I opted for Bigfoot. Yes, is it a man or is it the real deal? You'll have to pay to find out. His needs were simple. <laughs> some trees, rocks, and simple terraforming was all that was required. And for the other prehistoric creature I needed, I chose the Machren, or as I like to call them, problems. After that great escape, I decided to change the fences to concrete, because that's what keeps elephants in, and I thought that would also keep them in. But no time for that, as I added the last zoo animal needed. The Yeti! Those cryptic skeptics would find my zoo irresistible. I now only needed two more species to complete my assignment. And at this point, between the sperm whale, the problems, I wanted something that would be easy to look after and cheap. Just so happens that the Thompson Gazelle only needs this much space to be happy. So I named that also appropriately. Inmate number 35, however, who was a bit more picky and needed triple the space as well as a house. Inmate number 34 could only look longingly at the house. The only thing left now was that coveted 90 zoo rating. I added volcanoes, mini aquariums, and this little culturally offensive rodent. But no matter what I did, I couldn't seem to get my rating any higher. I was kind of stuck at like 88 or 89. So there was only one option left, and that was to embrace my inner John Hammond and get a T-Rex. Yahoo! <laughs> While I was waiting for the egg to hatch, I decided to add another swing to the playground. Uh, oh, 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 well there's that then. I didn't even make my T-Rex. But I couldn't let all this hard work go to waste. And before I knew it, we had life inside Panic 9. I had done it. I had made the ultimate zoo. Only one thing left to do then. I decided to let the marine creatures join in the festivities, but they were less enthusiastic. I don't know, there was just something about this game. It, there's the simplicity of it, the little choices that you can make. I really enjoyed it. It was nice going back to something that was simple in a way. I feel like the modern games, there's a toss up between complexity and it being overwhelming. And with Zoo Tycoon, I think it just strikes the balance absolutely correctly. Not too complex, but gives you just the right amount of freedom. Anyway, guys, if you want to see us play maybe more Zoo Tycoon in the future, leave a like and until next time, I'll see you guys later. Oh, bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> it's just fun. <laughs>